So the exam that we're going to do, we've called um, mock number 10. And um, the first question is, which of the following tissues transmits signals? And the answer is the nervous system. That would be the only one that transmits signals. Number two, what is the function of non-striated muscle tissue? And the answer is B, to carry out involuntary functions. So the non-striated muscle tissue is also called um, involuntary muscle or smooth muscle. And it's smooth, just like the womb or any of your, the muscles that are inside your body that we that works and we don't have to think about it the bladder is a muscle the womb you couldn't have any control over that the striated muscle or the voluntary muscle is the muscle that we've got like in our arms so that we could move and that is voluntary we can choose to move and that's the one like the steak on the plate with the striations that is um, an easy way to remember that muscle um, Three, which of the following membranes produces fluid to lubricate the end of bones? And you've got different choices there. And the answer is synovial membrane. We've got the synovial joint, which is two bones. They've got the cartilage at the ends and they've got the cushion of synovial fluid around them. And to keep the fluid, they've got a synovial membrane uh, around it as well. So just look and see and you think oh synovial joint yes it's the um it's the synovial membrane what is histology well that's the study of the structure of tissues what type of tissue has the ability to stretch and we've got a few to choose from here but the they've given us a clue because it's yellow elastic is the answer be nice to get that one what is the inner root sheath of the hair made of? And you'll just have, to, there's no way, you just have to know this one. It's, it's the Henle's layer, Huxley's layer and the cuticle layer. They have actually got as answers, dermal papilla, medulla, cortex and sebaceous gland, follicle wall. So they've mixed it up with the skin. So, um, but the answer is B, Henle's layer. Seven, which of the following can be found in the hair? And again, they've mixed up questions with skin and the answer then is keratin. So if you had that for a question, we've got keratin, horny flat cells, lymph capillaries, sweat glands. Well, the horny flat cells, that's the top of the epidermis. The lymph capillaries, sweat glands are all inside the dermis. So it could only be keratin for the hair, which are in your nails as well. Eight, what is herpes simplest also known as? And that is cold sore. Um, what is the cuticle? Well, you know when you go to um, have your nails done, or you've got sometimes you get the skin coming over the top there, and we know that's called the cuticle. But if you think that there's the matrix under there that's building up a new nail, and that's its job, is to protect the matrix because if you damage that matrix your nail comes out funny because it's got the wrong um, information being given to it to make a nice nail in future um, number 10 the reaction of which hormone may be responsible for osteoporosis and we've got progesterone, oestrogen, testosterone, human growth. So it's a toss up between progesterone and oestrogen and it's actually progesterone is the answer. What type of bone is a trapezoid? So remember the trapezoid is one of your carpal bones and that's classed as a short bone. It's not a flat bone and it's not a long bone. Your long bones could be in your finger even because they're longer than they're, than they're wide. We've got lots of other long bones as well. We've got irregular bones where your um, vertebrae, that would be an irregular 
bone. So the answer for a tra trapezoid, which is one of the carpals, is short. 12. Which of the following is the only movable bone in the skull? And we've got mandible, parietal, temporal and maxilla. And the parietal are here, and the temporal are here, the maxilla are up here, and the mandibles here. So the answer is the mandible, because that is truly movable. These have got suit, like suitors in between, with in your occipital and your parietal um, bones for your skull, because that's not fixed. Otherwise, you'd get a terrible headache. Um, but that is really. It's got a slight movement, but you couldn't move it too much, otherwise your brain would be in trouble. Um, so it's the it's the jawbone, which is the mandible. Which of the following is an example of abduction? Abduction, if someone is abducted, they're taken away. So you're looking for a way in the clues here. And it says um, movement of the bone away from the midline of the body so it's going away so abduction would be coming towards the midline of the body it's got one of the answers is turning the palm of the hand to the floor well that would be prone because this would be supine that's super thank you someone giving you mail oh, that's super thank you that's how i remember that one um so abduction going away which of the following is an example of extension? Well, if I said flex your muscles, you'd do that. So extending your muscle is that. So it's to strengthen or lengthen the limb. It's as simple as that. What is meant by an insertion point of a muscle? And that's the where it's at the moving end. So we've got origin where it starts and then the insertion is across a joint so that it can your um, biceps can raise up your arm for example so an insertion point is to the moving end what is the action of the spinaeus capitis i did this earlier today it's to extend the neck and i put a little video out on that in the comments for you where is the platysma is the next one this is here it's the front of the neck is the platysma um, which of the following muscles crosses the ankle joint and you've got flexor digitorum longus flexor carpi sartorius and the teres major and the answer is the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor carpi is in your arm. It's always going to be in your arm if it's carpi. The teres major is in your back. And um, your sartorius is, is in your leg. But it's the flexor digitorum longus is the answer. Um, dorsiflexion is the flexing of the foot upwards. So that's the dorsal part of your foot. So that's the... the planter part it plants your foot on the ground so this would be the dorsal and if it was flexing it would be turning up so that's dorsiflexion that was your toes pointing up and that would be plantar flexion they're pointing down like a ballet dancer um what is adduction defined as so yeah adding to the body movement part towards the midline so that's a nice one what is the function of the parasympathetic nervous system and the answers you've got here it's to raise blood pressure well we know it's not that because the parasympathetic one is like the parachute coming down calming down so we've got um raise blood pressure no it's calming increasing the rate and force of the heart no Constrict the blood vessels to the digestive system. No, because the parasympathetic is calming everything down so you can digest properly. So the answer is to reduce the rate of heart contractions because it's helping everything to calm down. 
The nervous system overworks in time of stress, causing, and it's got quite a bit here, nervous system in times of stress and its muscle tension is the answer to out of all these. It's got decrease the heart rate. Well, stress doesn't decrease, it increases it. Stable the stable the um, blood pressure. Well, it's overworked, and and so that gives you the clue that it's not working well. So muscle tension when people have got bad nerves and stress, it goes onto their shoulders. Um, how many pairs of sacral nerves are there? Five. You just have to learn five. For Twenty four. What is the cause of Parkinson? And it's damage to the basal ganglia. The other answers here will give you the clue if you didn't just know that answer because it says deterioration of the motor neurons in the body. Well, that would be motor neurone disease. Paralysis of the face caused by injury or infection. That's when the face drops to one side. That's Bell's palsy. And that is a usually a, a temporary condition. The other answer was loss of the protective myelin sheath from the nerve fibres and that's the fatty sheath along the axon and that is um, multiple sclerosis when they're, because everything's firing wrongly. So what's the cause of Parkinson's is damage to the basal ganglia of the brain. How many pairs of coccygeal nerves are there? One, one pair. The endocrine system works closely with the nervous system to provide homeostasis. It's the endocrine and the nervous system that works together to keep our body balanced, continually working to keep us well. 27, which part of the brain controls the endocrine system? That is the hypothalamus. It's linked directly to the um, master gland, the pituitary. Because um, the choices you had here was the cerebellum if you it's like the bell if you think of a bell and that's how you can think of movement um so the brain and the cere and the cerebrum is, is thinking part um so we've got the hypothalamus which of the following could be a symptom of hyperthyroidism hyper as in high h-y-p-e-r and that would be an increase in the metabolic rate someone's got hyperthyroidism they can't sit down and sometimes their eyes sort of pop a little bit um, the opposite of that is hypo low thyroidism when there could be an increase in weight depression dry skin not something you'd really want is it but um, thyroid again is this balancing act and um, it's very difficult to get the diagnosis of underactive thyroid. Where is the thyroid gland, gland situated? Well, it's in the throat. The malfunction of which hormone produces the feeling of jet lag? And that is melatonin. They even sell melatonin tablets now to help people with jet lag. The symptoms of PMS, premenstrual symptoms are, we haven't got time to go into it all ladies, it's um, the choices from what we've got, irregular cycle, painful periods, fight or flight. And the answer is B, bloating and depression. So that are two of the symptoms. Which of the following connects the bronchi to the alveoli? So we've got the trachea going into the bronchi. And then we've got the bronchioles and it's the bronchioles, a tiny little bronchi that where the exchange of gases take place. So it, the bronchi attach to the, uh, connect to the alveoli for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. What is pneumonia? Well, from the answers here, the answer is inflammation of the lung tissue caused by infection. Inflammation of the bronchial tubes would be bronchitis. Inflammation of the pleural lining would be pleurisy. Inflammation of the sinuses, these are other questions, causing facial pain, that would be sinusitis. 
Where is the femoral vein? Well, if you know your bones, you know the femur is the largest bone in your body, and that's in your leg, so that is the answer. Knowing the bones helps you to know where other parts of the um, body are. Um, so, femoral vein in your leg. Which artery supplies the head and the neck? And it's artery, and that is the common carotid. People often put jugular, but that's a vein, and they know that, but they still put jugular. Um, so don't. <laughs> it's my advice. Yeah. Artery supplying the head and neck, common carotid. There you go. What is the name of the muscular wall that separates the left and right side of the heart? Well, that's the septum. Just like we've got the septum here. This is the septum from the left and right side of your nose. There's a septum in your heart from um, separating each side. Which of the following can be caused by decreased red blood vessels? Anemia. I bet you knew that anyway. What is the cause of hepatitis A? It's fetally contaminated food. Now, I've seen some reports where it's quite disgusting whether fecally contaminated ice um, is given in um, a lot of restaurants because people haven't washed their hands and they're preparing things. Where would you find the tonsils? By the pharynx. The pharynx is in your throat. What is the name of the lymph node found behind the knee? And this is another one. You know where the, the names for behind the knee? It's the popliteal. If it's the axillary, do you remember where that is? Under the arm. And the inguinal, in your groin. There. Um, which vein does the thoracic duct drain into? And it's into the subclavian vein. How is lymph finally drained back into the circulatory system? And it's through the ducts. The lymph from the right side of the head, neck, arm and chest drain into, and that would be the right lymphatic duct. How is, um, oh, that's the same question. 45, which organ does cirrhosis affect? And from the, what you've got here for the choice, liver, spleen, kidneys, heart, and the answer is liver. Um, which of the following is a function of liver? Now, the liver's got over 500 functions, so um, there's only one of them on here. It, and the answer is to store vitamin A. It stores ADEK um, liver, and that was the only one that... Because one of the other answers was to act as a reservoir for bile. That's your gallbladder. To make bile more concentrated by absorbing being the water and um, that is the um, large intestine and um, 47 which section of the digestive system has a direct direct link to the lymphatic system so digestive linking to the lymphatic and that can only be done through the small intestine and the lipids which are the fats come out and go into the um, lymphatic system which is why it's a milky color what is cystitis? It's inflammation of the bladder. Um, 49. Which hormone is produced by the corpus luteum? I found a nice little video I can put in the comments here. And the answer is progesterone. And the last question is, which of the following instructions form part of the male reproductive system? And we've got Fallopian tubes, no. Cervix, no. Ovum, no. Vas deferens, yes. So that's that's a nice one. So let's hope you get that in your exam. And uh, good luck with your exam. And I uh, hope these help. I'll put these on the student area. And uh, I'll go through, check and make sure I've got it right.